Hey y'all, what's up? It's that surf chick Mimi and I wanted to make this video specifically about surf culture. It asks all the time why I started surfing, how I started surfing, black people don't surf. Well actually, surfing is indigenous to people of color as coconut oil and the sun is to our skin. Did you know that Polynesians created surfing? It was a part of their culture. And I'm going to recommend to you my top three documentaries you should watch that highlight the Polynesian culture and surfers of color. Surfing was looked at as equally skillful and fearless like that of their male counterparts. Sexual freedom was still embraced and surfing was a sport and favorite pastime that everyone was able to indulge in together as a community. In my opinion, the importance of women surfing in ancient Hawaii was so that it may be a challenging and exciting way to meet and make a partner. Splinters, oh my gosh. This is an action-packed, exciting surf documentary. And all the way over in New Papaginity, they live for the surf, breathe surfing, live surfing. Everything is about the surf culture. Whitewash. This documentary right here explores the race in America. And the kid looked at me dead in the eye, confused. He was like, surfer? You guys don't even swim. An English sea captain who describes surfing in Ghana. Surfing at Cape Coast Castle. Why did they stop surfing along the coast of West Africa? History is written not by natives, it's written by the white European world at the time. ASP World Tour is like probably very close to 100% white. You see one black guy surfing for every 100 white guys surfing, you know, or more. I was made fun of uh, at school, walking down the street with my surfboard, dudes yelling, black people don't surf, stuff trying to act white. You know, the myth that, that it's a white boy sport, that's absolutely absurd. Part two of my personal favorite documentaries, Jam and Nisha. The study or the story of Jamaican surf, the Jamaican story of surf, the Jamaican surf. J J Jamanisha. I don't know what the next words are, but you got to see it. I saw it on YouTube. It was so amazing that I want to go surf there. I want to go to the spot. I love going to Jamaica. So psh, who knew they had surf in Jamaica? Psh. I might not I might not come back. Surf bathing was referring to interacting with the waves whether on surfboards or body surfing or body boarding. So that was the earliest mention and that book was published in nineteen twelve. I started surfing at around age seven I think. And then I started surfing seriously at about age nine. I started surfing way back when I was probably about six and been hooked and surfing ever since. I've been surfing for 11 years, since I was six, 17 now. Tell you the truth, I don't really remember when I started surfing, but people have told me that two and a half and four years old. Seriously, at maybe 10, I'm 17 now, so. I started surfing when I was at least 16. I've been surfing for like, 10 years now, from I was 9. Um, and for myself, I would say the late 60s and my first surfboard, 1974. And we would lie on that on our bellies and catch the waves. So that's really where we started our surfing. Surfing began there for me personally, you know. We were surfable. And the manner in which the waves broke, they broke on the outside, went over the reef, and then died on the inside. So no matter how rough the sea got, there was inside area for swimming. So people would always go there to swim, and tourists got there, and eventually one of these tourists who was able to surf recognized that these were good surfing waves. When I saw A Deeper Shade of Blue, 
I felt connected to everyone in that documentary. It explained the feelings, how I, I connected to everyone. It explained my personal feelings and the whole, you know, essence of surfing. I loved it. Surfing is just really the core of our existence. This made it such a nice challenge to be able to learn about surfing all over again and maybe pay homage to the old Hawaiians. Everyone who walks in our beach, everyone who swims in the ocean, becomes part of our family. The thing I to understand the word aloha is to understand the, the essence of heart, and the heart is the breath of life. It's just a totally different feeling, just flying free. Hawaiian, Eddie would go. Becomes the first lifeguard at Waimea Bay. He attempted over 500 rescues at Waimea Bay, and his record, he lost zero. Anybody that rides Waimea Bay knows you're only taking a chance and just know what you're doing. He wanted people to enjoy and love Hawaii, and that was the unique thing about it. Hawaiians are the ones that can be shoved aside to make room for new hotels going up. Even in the 1960s, as kids, we weren't wanted on Waikiki property. That is what really, really hurts. That sense of being inferior in your own homeland. Native Hawaiian people's own sense of identity was going extinct. There is no countervailing discourse, really, until the building of the Hokulea. And the daring act of